Hello my crafty friends and welcome back. This month's blog hop for Scrap and Stamp is sending paper hugs. So I want to thank you very much for stopping by and make sure you hop along to all the blogs. There's a chance to win prizes. This month is incredibly special as um, we have to send paper hugs these days uh, with social distancing uh, stopping us from sending the real thing. I think it's super important that we create ever more cards as we can and send them out to our loved ones as well as uh, you know giving cards to strangers dropping them off at uh, um, you know old folks homes or dropping them off to people who are in the care provider industry nurses or doctors it's so incredibly important for us to show our support and uh, let everybody know that even though we're apart we're still together and thinking of each other so after all my babbling, I've uh, gone ahead and started my card uh, using the Sending Paper Hugs sentiment stamp from Picket Fence. As you can see, I'm using my Stamp Perfect and I'm using my Stays On ink on top of some masking paper. I want to first uh, create a mask of the sentiment as I'll be using the Gina K Wreath Builder set to create my first card today. So I'm going to stamp that sentiment out on to some masking paper and then I will fussy cut around it and then we can put that in the um, I'm going to put it in the middle of my cardstock which is the template that I'm using this time is the four inch by four inch now the wreath builder set comes with two templates uh, one is three and three quarters inches and one is four and a quarter inches square uh, the one that I'm using is the larger one and then it also comes with a really great stamp set. So if you can get your hands on this Wreath Builder bundle set, it's really worth the money. I'll link to that on my blog and uh, I'll link to the blog down below in the comments. Make sure you check that out. Again, remember to leave comments on everyone's blog for a chance to win a uh, gift card for Scrap and Stamp. All right, so after I've created that uh, mask, I'm going to fussy cut it out and the um, basis of my card is this is going to be in the middle of all the flowers that I'm going to create around it. The cardstock is just a, just some white um, lawn fawn cardstock that I had in my stash and uh, I'll start beginning to stamp those images now. All right to start off I have chosen the my distress inks. I'm starting off with worn lipstick and a floral image from the Wendy Becky uh, Wreath Builder Bundle. And at this point, again, I have not stamped down my sentiment yet. I just have the masking paper there as a placeholder. And I've laid my little flower down and I start stamping. So you're going to turn the cardstock, and I like to move in a clockwise way so that I remember where I'm going with it. And then you just um, keep stamping. So turn it so that the corner matches up to the next little corner slot on the template there and then apply your ink and stamp down. Really simple. I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Uh, you may want to put a little dot down, um, very similar to how you use your uh, Concord and Ninth turnabout jigs, uh, just to kind of keep you um, in the know of where you're going. Now don't freak out if when you go to stamp the whole image is not on your cardstock. That's okay. You're just depending on where you lay out your stamps. Uh, sometimes you might not get a full image and that's okay because it, it looks better if some of the stamping is overlaying or hanging off of your cardstock. So again just keep turning it until you fill the whole circle. Now you don't have to use every single corner. I like to because I like how it really uh, fills out the look of the cardstock with your floral images. You can um, skip one and do like every second one if you like. It just uh, spreads things out just a bit more. So once you have that done, you can go ahead and pick out your next stamp and we'll start stamping the next layer. So the next image that I have chosen um, after laying a few out was the leaf image. And I go ahead and place that on to the Stamp Perfect to close the lid. Um, you are going to need a stamp positioner of some type if you haven't figured it out yet uh, for this process. 
Um, so either a Stamp Perfect, a Misty, or the Tim Holtz platform uh, works really well for the larger wreath builders. Uh, this Stamp Perfect seemed to work well for this smaller one, but there are larger wreath builder sets out there that you can purchase, or you can even make your own if, uh, if you don't want to spend the money. You definitely can make your own. So again, just stamping each of these images, re-inking each time. Sometimes I double stamp them uh, to get uh, a deeper color of the ink. And then just working your way around. So I will do this with several of the images in all of the colors that you see on the right there. Again, linking them over at my blog, so check that out. And uh, so yeah, we'll just kind of jump ahead and I'll show you how the finished stamping looks on this project. Okay, so I now have come to the end of my stamping and you can see that I have filled that entire uh, square up with images. Some of the images I duplicated and just changed the color of them. Um, you can see that I've stamped over that masking. You can see how, um, why the masking I wanted there is to make sure that the sentiment itself would pop out from that. So the best part of this whole part is removing that masking and seeing what uh, you have underneath. So let's go ahead and do that now. Um, again, I like to call this Christmas morning. So um, before I remove that mask, though, what I want to do is I want to line up my stamp again over top of that mask, making sure it lines up perfectly so that when um, I stamp my image down, I had it exactly where it was on the mask. So take the time to line that up nicely and make sure it's exactly where you need it to be. And then we can remove that. All right, so now that I have closed my Stamp Perfect door there and have the stamp on the lid, I can go ahead and remove the masking paper and stamp my sentiment down. I like to use the Tim Holtz craft pick just to loosen off the masking paper and because I have been pressing down on top of it quite a bit with each of these stamps it's really um, really stuck down to the cardstock so I want to remove it carefully making sure that I don't tear my project at this point. Um, the Gina K masking magic paper works really well. Um, it has just enough stick that um, it holds down onto your paper but that it doesn't rip so I highly recommend uh, looking into purchasing that again I'll link it over on my blog for you. So I'll go ahead and remove this and then I have a perfect place here for my sentiment to stamp down. Now there's going to be a little bit of white around the edges that's okay it doesn't bother me um, it was just the way that I cut my mask you can cut it closer if you like. Um, and if you wanted, you can actually cut in between um, the two layers or the two sentences there, the words, if you want to have more of the flowers show through. So I stamped that with the Versa Claire Nocturne ink. And look at this. I think it is gorgeous. Really bright colors that we definitely need during this time. I don't know where you are, but here in Calgary, it is still snowy and I'm over it. So yeah, so I'll show you the finished card here. I just absolutely love how it turned out. I just love how this turned out. I cut down the stamped piece with the Lawn Fawn stitched square die cuts and then a coordinating purple piece for the background. I also created a coordinating envelope for this particular card. So a nice bright sunny uh, paper hug to go in the mail. Alright for my next card I wanted to show you that you don't have to use the images that come with the turnabout bundle. You can use any images that you have on hand to create a fun wreath or a fun background. And I've chose the Concord and Ninth Blooms fill-in for this next floral image. This is just one of those additional pieces that you can use for that set. And this time I'm not going to be stamping on every little um, turn. I'm actually going to skip a corner. I'm going to be stamping in this ripe persimmon color. It's just such a gorgeous, beautiful, bright, fun, happy color. And I'll go ahead and stamp this down. 
on this one because the image is large I found that I like to uh, double stamp it to get a nice rich color and make sure that that whole image looks uh, perfect and filled in. I also chose the leaf image from that same stamp set and I again will be uh, stamping this. This color I chose I think was the bundled sage. Again I'm not stamping on every uh, turn. I'm skipping a, a corner there but I will actually stamp the same leaf image down again uh, just applying it to a different area of the um, project and then turning making sure that that leaf is on both sides of the flower. So this definitely goes by really quickly and it's a great tool to use when you want to mass produce cards. And that's kind of my goal this month is to mass produce a whole bunch of cards and send them out to everybody. Like I said, um, really important that we let those around us know we're thinking of them. Again, I'm going to fussy cut around this image, just kind of creating a wreath out of it. And to finish off this card, I did add some jewels in the center of those little flowers. I adhered it to some yellow cardstock again using that Lawn Fawn Square um, die cut, and I think it turned out beautifully. All right, I have one more card to show you today, and I wanted to show you that you don't have to use floral images um, with the wreath builder you can use any image you want I'm again using the Concord 9th set but this time it is the mail drop I believe this is an older set I'm not sure if you can still get it if you can I'll definitely link to it but this little envelope with a heart on it again I thought it worked brilliantly with the sentiment um, that we're using today from Picket Fence and this time when I stamp it I'm using Memento Black Tuxedo ink because I'll be doing some Copic coloring and I have to create some masks for this one. I'll end up having to create two because these little envelopes are going to overlap each other. So taking the time and care that when I stamp this down, I'm double stamping it to get a good, clear, crisp image. And um, also making sure uh, that I have that stamp created and placed over top of the envelope each time. So you'll be doing a lot of removing of the stamp and adhering it down as we go along. All right, you can see I'm going to lay that mask that I've created down over top of the first little envelope. And I'm inking up the stamp. I'll place it down and again with this Memento ink I like to uh, double stamp to get a nice clear image. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to remove the mask and apply it to the one that you've just stamped down. So I'm using just my scissors here to lift that up. And I laid it over top of the next one and stamped down. Okay, and then I turn it. This time I'm turning it a little different. I'm turning it counterclockwise to create this one. But again, as long as you just remember which direction you're going in, you should be fine. All right, applying that stamp down to the image that I just stamped and going again. Now be really careful when you are reapplying that mask down, that ink could still be wet on the mask. So if you run your finger along it like I do, you can actually pick up ink on your finger and when you lay the mask down, if you are rubbing your finger along there, you could transfer ink onto your project. So just be really mindful of that. Um, that's something that um, I didn't really think about and I ended up getting a little bit of ink smearing on my project. It doesn't show up in the end project because I did cut this out, but just something to be aware of as you're moving along. Okay, we've jumped ahead to the last little envelope that we're stamping down, and this is where the additional mask needs to come in. You'll have to mask the first envelope you did and the last one, and then um, you just stamp it over top, and then that way you're not... Um, over stamping on an image that you don't 
mean to. Hopefully that makes sense. So again, now this is the Christmas morning moment where you release the paper and you see your beautiful little wreath that you've created with the envelopes. Card, I used a background stamp from Simon Says Stamp. Um, I believe You Matter is what it is. Again, I'll link it at the blog. I've colored in each of the little envelopes with some Copic colors and added some Wink of Stella clear glitter to the little hearts. Uh, the sentiment is stamped with some embossing, some clear embossing. And I really love how this final card turned out. Here's a look at all the cards together. I think these are really fun ways to let people know that you're thinking of them. I want to thank you again so much for taking the time to stop by the blog today. And please hop along with all of our wonderful creators. And until next time, guys, have a wonderful day.